Everybody knows that porn is questionable. Watching too much of it can desensitize you to real encounters, giving you unrealistic expectations that can make normal sex with a loving partner challenging. Not only that, but until very recently, a lot of the content on Pornhub and other major sites was pretty suspect. You could easily stumble upon videos of people who were probably too drunk, revenge porn of exes, and other videos that could easily ruin the subject's life that at the same time were getting millions of views. But there's an even darker side to Pornhub and its parent company MindGeep, one that's not just immoral and gross, but straight out illegal. For the vast majority of Pornhub's existence, you didn't have to be verified to post videos there. As a result, the New York Times reported that Pornhub was infested with videos of child abuse and rape. One person accused Pornhub of hosting the video of her rape, which occurred when she was just 14. Mia Khalifa, arguably the most famous ex-porn star in the world, said that the corporate porn contracts prey on vulnerable women and girls. Mia, who became a household name after only three months in the porn industry, made a grand total of $12,000 from her time in the business compared to the millions and millions of views and dollars she brought to Pornhub and MindGeek. Well, off the videos, I made $12,000. $12,000 according to my tax report. In 2020, Pornhub removed all unverified content on its site. But it only did so due to legal problems, not because they actually cared about fixing the issue. The company told New York Times that it had only suspended all the videos rather than actually deleting them. There's little doubt in my mind that if the legal situation ever clears up in their favor, Pornhub will simply put all the content back onto their site. Nicholas Kristoff in the New York Times found that there were thousands of videos showing underage girls. A company monetized videos of young girls being raped or of anybody engaged in non-consensual behavior. He proceeded to call out MasterCard for supporting Pornhub and when MasterCard launched their own investigation, they became the first major credit card company to cut ties with Pornhub and MindGeek and not allow its users to make any purchases on the site using their cards. The fact that MasterCard cut ties with Pornhub as did Visa shortly after, and that the CEO and COO of MindGeek, Ferris Santoon and David DeSillo, quickly quit earlier this summer, is significant. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Pornhub makes more money than almost any other website. It's no surprise that the specific findings of all these investigations has remained hidden. But when CEOs resign and they take action to suspend the majority of the videos on its site, all of that smoke is coming from somewhere. And that smoke is getting pretty thick. Not all of the horrible content on Pornhub comes from individual random users. Pornhub grants access to millions of people who want to anonymously consume explicit content, making it the perfect accidental fence for organizations that traffic women, film their encounters, and want to make more money on the back end. One of the scariest examples of this is when a 15-year-old that went missing in Florida in 2018 was found a year later because people were able to identify her in videos and pictures uploaded to Pornhub. The craziest part is that the kidnappers had verified accounts to post from. The verification process at the time was pretty simple. All you had to do was send in a picture of yourself holding your username written on a piece of paper. That means that even if this happened after Pornhub took on all unverified content, the video and the pictures of this kidnapped child would not have been affected. Even if a creator uses paid actresses, that doesn't always mean they've truly consented. This is key. The company still does not confirm the consent of everyone who appears in the video. In 2019, 22 women sued Girls Do Porn who had an active Pornhub channel for coercing them to perform in scenes. A judge has ordered the website titled girlsdoporn.com to pay $12.8 million to a group of 22 women who, according to the court, were deceived into doing an adult film under false pretenses. This is similar to what Mia Khalifa experienced during her time. Not only was Mia grossly underpaid for how much money they brought into the site, but she was also forced to do many of her scenes or forced to do things during her scenes she didn't previously agree to do. This was part of the reason she only lasted three months in porn, not the wage theft. As a result of the lawsuit against Girls Do Porn, the owner, Michael Pratt, was charged with raping a minor and committing multiple sex trafficking crimes. 
We've already mentioned the 14-year-old Rose Kalemba that was raped for 12 hours at gunpoint and filmed and uploaded to Pornhub. Even after she confronted Pornhub and proved she was underage to refuse to take the video down. Rose had to stoop to pretending to be a lawyer on the verge of suing Pornhub to get them to budge. The Sunday Times investigated Pornhub and found videos of girls as young as three being raped. Some of the underage videos they found had hundreds of thousands of views and had been on the site for years. There are so many things that are bad about porn even if they're not straight out illegal. Maybe the biggest thing is its impact on people, especially young men who experience sex for the first time through porn. Porn floods the brain with dopamine, just like any other drug will do. And like any other drug, it becomes addicting. It changes your brain. If you're used to very specific type of sex you see in porn, where women are always down to do everything and be treated like objects and where men always have to take control and dictate everything about what happens and never have a problem maintaining an erection, your brain will be unable to feel as good as if you're experiencing anything that doesn't flood it with that much dopamine. That's why people who frequently use porn find themselves going down the rabbit hole and over time looking at more hardcore and intense videos. They've built up such a high tolerance to the dopamine kick that they need bigger and bigger hits to feel the high. Eventually, this can lead to material so hardcore it shows violence against women, either simulated or, as we found out, unfortunately real. This rabbit hole can happen incredibly quickly, especially in teenagers who are really susceptible to dopamine, meaning that millions of men and women are seeing violence against women as normal before they've even had the chance to have real sex with a consenting adult partner. Porn doesn't cause violence against women or rape or anything like that. It's always the offender decision to actually go through with it. But it can reinforce those urges in people, especially those who are susceptible to that dopamine kick. Porn can also drown out other things in your life. Research has shown that men rate themselves as less in love with their real life partners after seeing porn than they were before watching it. It redirects the brain and makes it focus on the big flashy videos and ignore the real people in your life. It also makes both men and women less satisfied with their partner's looks, sexual performance, and willingness to try new things in bed. Porn leads to divorce and the fact that MindGeek owns 10 of the 15 biggest porn sites in the world, that falls on them. Porn has a charity wing called Pornhub Cares that does fun things like saving the oceans and sex ed but they're clearly falling short at letting the public know about the specific dangers of porn and making any efforts to combat them on their site. MindGeek with even more resources and even more sites under their control is even more guilty of this. Finally, even the porn that doesn't actually star women that have been kidnapped or trafficked contributes to human trafficking. Porn is highly effective at making men more likely to visit prostitutes, specifically because they're less excited by the real potential partners in their lives. The thing is, in most parts of the world, most women don't become prostitutes willingly. Most prostitutes, especially those that work with pimps or in massage parlors or brothels, are the victims of human trafficking themselves and porn makes men significantly more likely to seek out their services and get more money into the organizations responsible for kidnapping young girls. Mia Khalifa isn't the only porn star that's been vocal about how much she regrets doing porn. Brie Olsen got into porn in 2006 and stayed in the industry for 5 years before she transitioned to mainstream acting. Brie was paid well unlike Mia. In fact, she referenced the fact that if she ever got back into porn, she could easily make $20,000 a month as proof of how bad the experience was. Go back to porn today and still make that. I could go back to porn and make $20,000 just in one week to, if I wanted to this week, and I don't. Since she hasn't even considered going back in more than a decade. The reason Brie Olsen regrets doing porn is the way society has treated her since she got out. Every time she goes out in public, she can feel and hear people talking about her. Strangers have come up to her and called her a slut, threatened her, followed her. Even though these are things a lot of women have to deal with, for Brie, since she got out of porn, it's only gotten amplified. And Pornhub and MindGeek have nothing to protect their former stars. As soon as a porn star leaves, they're on their own. No other employer does that. Any other job in the world, if you made your company millions of dollars with just a few months or years of work, you'd be eligible for retirement benefits, good job references, something to help you transition out. But when it comes to porn, mm -hmm. 
you end up with nothing.